Well, hello, Kent Nazarene. I want to welcome everyone that's joining us online. This month, we are talking about integrity. We are in week number two. And last week, we said that we live in a world that is absolutely obsessed with how we look. You know, if you are beautiful, then you're valuable, like this young lady who's very beautiful. So if you're beautiful, keep being beautiful. But listen, even the Bible affirms this in 1 Samuel 16, 7, that the that the world or people, right, look at the outward appearance, uh, but the Lord looks at the heart. And the Lord looks at the heart because he cares about the condition of our heart. God could really care less about our image. Let me say it this way. The world cares about image, but God cares about integrity. And that's why our memory verse for the month is found in Proverbs 10, 9, and it says this, anyone who lives without blame walks safely. That's another way of saying living with integrity. But anyone who, gets, who takes a crooked path will get caught. And God wants our heart to be pure so we can walk through this life safely. And God doesn't want our heart to be crooked because he doesn't want us going around worrying all the time about getting caught, you know, wearing a mask, pretending to be one person here and pretending to be another person at school or work and, and trying to keep up with all the different lies we're telling. That's no way to live at all. So integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say or do. Now, Jesus, he talked about this in his most famous sermon, uh, what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And he said that if we choose integrity, if we choose to live this way, then we're gonna be blessed. So he said, blessed are the pure in heart. And again, that's another way to say integrity. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, what does that mean, see God? That means if we choose integrity, then we're going to see God in our lives right now. We're going to see God where we work. We're going to see God work in our homes. We're going to see God working in our finances. We're going to see, see God working in relationships. We're going to see, uh, see God working in situations that other people may say it's just a coincidence, but we know that it's, that it's God. So if you're having trouble seeing God in your life, then you may have an integrity issue. Now, integrity doesn't mean that we're perfect. We don't have to be perfect to see God. If that's what it means, then none of us have integrity. Uh, integrity doesn't mean we will never make a mistake. If that's what integrity means, then none of us have it. Integrity doesn't mean that we will be completely sinless. If that's what integrity is, then none of us have it. What integrity is, is when in every area of our life, our heart is more interested in God's approval than man's approval. Now, there's examples all over the Bible about this. Uh, there are people that chose to do the right thing, but they had a wrong heart. And God said, you know, that didn't count. And then there's people that actually did some wrong things but had the right heart, and God said they're approved, all right? They're, they're good. They have uh, integrity. Uh, if you look at uh, Noah, if you look at Abraham, uh, Moses, the apostle Paul, uh, King David, all of them had integrity, yet all of them sinned. None of them were sinless. None of them were perfect. They all made mistakes, yet they had integrity. So let's, uh, for example, just look at King David. In Acts 13, 22, we read that God testified concerning King David. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Now, if you've read anything about David, you, you read that, and you're, you're like, what? Are you kidding me? Uh, because you know that David, at one point, he literally pretended to be insane to, to get away with something. Another time, he slept with another man's wife. He commits adultery. Then he tries to cover it up by having this, this woman, her husband, killed. So David did all kinds of things that were wrong, yet God looks down and said, this, this one, this is a man after my own heart. And you may be asking, well, why? It wasn't because he was sinless. It's because deep down, King David, deep down in the deepest part 
hearts of his heart, he wanted to do what was right. He wanted to please God. And we have to realize that God, he already knows our hearts. And God knows that that we tend to pretend at times, that we tend to fake it at times, that we tend to wear a mask. God knows that we act one way in this situation and another way in this situation. We, God knows we say things over here, but <laughs> don't say things over there. And God wants us to free us from that kind of living. And, and, and the first step, really, in finding that freedom is knowing that even when we mess up, God wants to talk to us, that we can go to God even when we're pretending or faking or or messing up. And we need to learn this, that being truthful with God keeps us close to him, that we can be truthful with God with whatever is going on in our life. Because sometimes in life, things happen that just take us by surprise. I was trying to remember the first time this happened to me, and I was around 10 or 12 uh, years old, and I was over at my neighbor's house, Billy, in the basement, and we were playing pool, and he pulled out a pack of cigarettes. I didn't even know Billy smoked, so it surprised me. It caught me off guard. And of course, you know, Billy asked me if I wanted to try one. Now, when I was, you know, 12 years old, I wasn't going to smoke a cigarette in front of my mom. I would, I would never do that. I don't think I would do that now, okay? I don't think I would do that right now. But in that basement, in the privacy of that basement, around the pool table, with, you know, my parents not there, I caved. You know, I gave in and I smoked a cigarette, and I knew it was something that I shouldn't have done. But it caught me by surprise, and I was caught off guard, and I did the wrong thing. Now, when we do the wrong thing, what do we do? We do the direct opposite of integrity. We don't tell the truth. What we usually do is we try to cover it up. When we mess up, we cover up. Can you relate to that? You know, maybe you messed up on your taxes and trying to cover it up, you know, to the IRS. Maybe you messed up at school and you're trying to hide it from your parents. You you know, maybe you've messed up at work and you've, you know, told a lie or said it was someone else's fault or you've buried the file. You know, maybe you've messed up in a relationship and you've had to lie about it. Maybe you've messed up in what you're watching on TV or on your phone or, you know, on your computer and, you know, you've uh, erased your history. Because when we mess up, What we do is we try to cover up because we believe that if we cover it up, if we sweep it under the rug, then no one has to deal with it. But that's not the truth. Say that that you and I, we, we go out fishing in a boat and I'm on one side of the boat and you're on the other and I start drilling a hole in my side of the boat. Well, you'd probably be concerned. And the myth is, is that it's my side of the boat and what I do with my life, it doesn't affect anyone else. But we all know that if I drill a hole in the boat, it's not only going to affect me, it's going to affect you. And we cannot sin and not affect other people in our life. It's just not the truth. Because we all live in one big boat and it's called the earth. And this is a very profound statement that I want you to pay attention to. Sin may be personal, but it is never private. And any time we sin, it's it's just not my life. It's just not it's not going to affect anyone. No, even if you don't know about it, uh, other people's sin affect you. Husbands, even if your wife doesn't know about your sins, they affect your wife. Wives, even if your husband doesn't know about your sins, they are affecting your husband. Husbands and wives, even if your kids don't know about your sins, they're affecting your kids. Kids, even if your parents don't know about your sins, they are affecting your parents. Because it's absolutely crazy to think that our sins don't affect anyone else in our lives because they absolutely do. That's just the truth. And God, he doesn't expect us to be perfect God doesn't expect us to be completely sinless, but what God does expect of us is to live with integrity, okay? To fess up when we sin, 
Okay, when we mess up, <laughs> let's fess up. <laughs> let's admit it. You know, after I smoked that cigarette, I, I could not live with it. I had to tell someone about it. And I didn't know who else I could tell other than my mom, because I totally trusted my mom. And I was embarrassed and I was ashamed. I remember going to my mother with just alligator tears coming out of my eyes and telling her what I had done. And I don't remember what she said to me. I have no idea what she said to me, but I will never forget how she made me feel. She made me feel loved, accepted, and forgiven. And even 30 years later, as I was writing this this week, just chills went all through my body thinking about how my mother was God to me in that moment, how she demonstrated the love of God. And what we need to realize is that when we mess up, when we sin, we can go and talk to our Heavenly Father. Because if we confess our sins, if we would just fess up, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And this is the most beautiful part of this verse. And he will forgive us our sins, our past, our present, our future, whatever it may be. He will forgive us our sins. And he is going to purify us from all unrighteousness. God will forgive us for whatever we've done. That's the good news of the gospel. When we've done something wrong, we can talk to God and ask him for forgiveness because being truthful with God keeps you close to him. Now, there's some of us that we've been hesitating to be truthful with God in some area of our life. And it's keeping us from God. It's not keeping God from us. But in some area of our life, we are lacking integrity. It's just not there. We're pretending to be someone that we're not. We know that we're willfully sinning in a certain area. And, you know, we just need to say to God that I, I've sinned. You know, God, I sin. God, you know, I don't keep my promises all the time. I want to, but I don't. God, you know, I'm not kind to people. I want to be kind to people, but sometimes I'm just mean. I'm short. I'm just ill-tempered. I just have a bad attitude. You know, God, I, I, I gossip sometimes. And, and sometimes I listen to gossip. And honestly, God, I like it. I, like, I know I shouldn't like it, but I do. But I know I need to stop. I know I'm lacking integrity in my life in that area. God, you know... I have some prejudice in my heart. I really do. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a, a racist, but there's some prejudice in my heart against people that are different from me. And, and I don't want to have that, but I do, and I just admit it. You know, God, I don't always control my anger. I, I want to, but sometimes I just get so angry, and I lose control, and I say things, and I do things that I just regret regret and I really need help God in that area you know God I sin and and when we're truthful with God I, I just want you to know that it doesn't push God away from us no it gets us close to God it gets us close to God and when God looks down at, at Dan Hansen and, and and God looks at me and, and and if I sin God doesn't look at me and say oh what a mess up what what a screw up what a failure I can't believe he did it I can't believe he fell for it again no God doesn't look down at me like that God looks down and says there's Dan and I know deep in Dan's heart that he loves me and he really wants to do the right thing but he messed up he sinned, and in the same way that my mom showed me love and acceptance and forgiveness, that's God's approach to me. God is my Father, Jesus is my Savior, and the Holy Spirit walks with me. And that's why when Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they'll see God, I, I, when, when we're walking in integrity, we get to see God. You know, it was awesome just this week. In fact, on Wednesday night, I got to see God. 
I got to see God. I, I was here and, and, our, and, our, and our young people, our teenagers and our middle schoolers and our, and our children, they, they came into this worship center and they worshiped God. Our praise band was up here. It was absolutely awesome. I got to sit back there and run the lights. And then they went into the gym and they formed this big uh, circle and, and, and it was just amazing adults and young people and you know they all had their mask on and we're doing everything to, to be safe but it was a beautiful picture I left I thought I wish I would have taken a picture but I was so moved I was seeing God in this place and then I, I walked through the foyer and I heard our choir they're getting ready for Christmas and I heard the songs of Christmas and celebrating the birth of Jesus and I'm just telling you I saw God people using their spirit spiritual gifts and it was absolutely amazing in the words that Jesus said blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God it was happening in my life and I praise God for that and that's what God wants for you oh I've been remembering Daniel when the devil's come at me this week and tempted me to to go against uh, integrity I said you know what if Daniel can do it I can do it I can stand for my convictions I can follow God because God I care more about what you think than about what people think and that's how God looks at you as well listen when you mess up when you sin God isn't looking at you and saying oh what a mess up I can't believe they did it again no God wants you to be truthful with him because it'll keep you close to him what's holding you back what's holding you back from just being truthful with God saying God you know what this this is who I am and I need your help I just want to wrap up with a few reflection questions. But before we get to those, this is an awesome statement. We will never be sinless on this earth, but we can sin less. How? Again, by being truthful with God. That keeps us close to Him. So number one, God, is there something I have been covering up? Is, is, is there an area of your life? Is there an area of your life you're struggling with integrity and you've just been covering it up? Just just think about it. Let God speak to you. And number two, God, am I willing to be truthful with you about it? Are you willing to have an honest conversation and say, God, I'm tired of faking it. I'm tired of pretending this is who I am, and I don't want to do this anymore. I want to have integrity in this area. Oh, God, would you help me? And number three, God, how could being truthful with you help me see you? in my life. I'm a believer in this. That area of integrity you're struggling with. You know what? God's going to take that and he's going to help you find freedom. He's going to transform it. And God is going to help you see him in your life. Why? Because it's not about being perfect. It's about the direction of your heart. It's about the desire of your heart to, to please God above all things. So I want to pray for us right now. I want to pray a prayer for us. So just bow your heads with me and let's pray to God. God, I thank you for this word integrity. I thank you for this concept of being pure in heart. I thank you for this gift of being able to choose what's truthful in, in whatever we say or do and not having to worry about pretending and wearing a mask and faking it. But God, you care so much about our heart that you would put your finger on areas of our life and say, hey, Dan, hey, hey, Joe, hey, Sue, you know, whoever it may be. Hey, I want this area to be whole again. And God, so right now, we just confess and we admit the areas of our life that we're lacking integrity. We present those to you. Just present them to him right now. Just be honest. Be truthful. And tell God that you need help, that you want to do better in that area. And then just ask him for forgiveness. Oh, God, would you forgive us? We're so sorry for our sins. God, we repent and confess. We're fessing up. We're not trying to cover it up. We're fessing up right now. Oh God, we need your forgiveness. We need your grace. We need your mercy. That's why we need the cross. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need a Savior. And oh God, would you help us? Help us to see you in our life because God, you're helping put our life in order again. You're making us whole. You're dealing with us in this area of integrity. God, make our church uh, just a greater church of integrity, all of us together. Oh God, could we be truthful with you? Because we know that if we are, oh God, it draws us close to you, God, and we want to be close to you. We don't want to be far from you. So we thank you again for your word, and we thank you so much for this series on integrity. Continue to speak to us this month about integrity and not wearing a mask and helping you to make our hearts whole. We pray this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name.
way. We have so much to look forward to. Two more messages in this series, and then next month, just a month of blessing our community, and then we're going into December with celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you tuned in, and I hope you tune in next week as we continue to grow in our understanding of integrity. God bless you. You have a great day. Thanks for watching. If this message was helpful to you, please share it and don't forget to subscribe. If you'd like to join us in person, visit cantonazarene.com for times and locations.